Oswald the Lucky Rabbit has been in the public domain for decades, but Disney doesn't want you to be able to use him. Let's do something about that. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. A classic tune name you either know or you don't. Hopefully do. Being the original breakout Disney cartoon to lead from the sound era, he's a rather important figure to many animation history fans. It's kinda a long tale, but I'll try to condense it. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was created by Walt Disney and Ub Iwerks in the 1920s for a series of shorts produced by Universal Studios. However, since their deal with Universal meant Oswald and the content they made belonged to Universal, when negotiations between them and Universal fell through, Disney and Ub were left to start from scratch with a new character, you all may know as Mickey Mouse. But this ain't about him. For years, Universal continued to produce shorts for Oswald with some interesting designs. But while the mouse's popularity grew, his popularity declined over time, till eventually he became a near forgotten tune. But in 2006, Universal and Disney struck a deal, handing over Oswald's rights and even some of his original Disney created reels. After that, Disney registered even more trademarks for Oswald, with big plans for the character, including video games and merchandising. Well, up until like maybe like a year or two or so ago where they kind of just stopped using him completely for a lot of stuff and like he even started disappearing from their official stores. It's a whole nother thing, canceled show, oh. I could go on for hours about Oswald's history and all the ways it's misunderstood. But for the sake of this video, let's just establish that Oswald, the character as of right now, is public domain. Some people believed he entered the public domain this year, but there are articles from even before Epic Mickey that explain Oswald has been public domain since 1956, specifically because there are no records showing Universal ever renewed their copyright for his original film, Trolley Troubles. Which, via copyright law back then, means that the short and Oswald himself are public domain. What? Wow! This whole time? Oswald's been public domain? That means that I can- uh, 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 But wait. Can't exactly celebrate just yet. As earth shattering as this news was to me when I first discovered it, looking into it and speaking with others, there are some caveats. Oswald, the original design and character from those shorts, is public domain, as anyone can produce transformative works about him, rather it's artwork, animation, potentially even music. There is another side to intellectual property law that might pose a problem. But before we continue on, I'd like to discuss this video's sponsor, ExpressVPN. After that channel hack I experienced a few months back, it kind of made me realize just how little I've considered my online privacy and security. When my channel was being hacked, I was out at a theme park and was helpless to do anything as I watched the hackers log in, change my information, and lock me out. After which, they sold my channel off to some crypto bro. Google never gave me any insight into how this hack happened and how they got past so many of the security settings Google gave me. When connected to any public networks, especially when out in public, a lot of the data your phone is sharing is easily interceptable. They can access usernames, passwords, words, or other kinds of personal information. They often collect this data and sell it too. ExpressVPN can help prevent this with an encrypted channel of communication it creates between your devices and the internet, making it infinitely harder for hackers to decipher information being shared from your devices. It's easy to use, and I currently have it on both my computer and my phone. You can secure your information online today with ExpressVPN, and get three free months by visiting expressvpn.com slash teamneutron. The link is also in the description. Now enjoy the rest of the video! Trademark Unlike copyright, that is something generated upon creation and eventually expires, trademark can be kept up forever as long as it's maintained and updated. It also has to be registered for specific kinds of items. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was still trademarked by Universal, and eventually those rights were passed to Disney and even expanded upon. When you look up Oswald the Lucky Rabbit on trademark registries, you can see that Disney has plenty filed for him. Ah, yes. A fanciful mouse? Alright, I can see why that one's dead, but lots of them are still alive. Considering the trademark image Disney has of Oswald is very similar to his original public domain depiction. At first, I was concerned this could mean Disney could try and pressure anyone who uses his likeness by claiming trademark infringement. But here's the real interesting thing. As of this script being written, there's one particular trademark they have filed that has failed to go through and actually go active. Their trademark on Oswald for entertainment services. We're entering some speculation territory. I'm not a lawyer, so I'd like to state if there's anyone who's knowledgeable on IP law or wants to correct or corroborate my theories real quick, that would be much appreciated. See, at the tail end of 2020, they filed for a trademark on entertainment services for Oswald, but it was suspended seven months later. 
Since then, it has remained suspended and even updated for suspension check this year. Why is this significant? Because it means that the trademark isn't registered due to some issues preventing it from moving forward. It's pending. And a pending trademark, as far as I've researched, is not enforceable. My theory is Disney is struggling to make a case that they could legally actually own trademark for him on this. Because as a public domain animated character, having a trademark on his original design infringes on how public domain law works. It's also possible that the recent boom of Oswald ads and the total lack of a new Oswald show could be them trying to make a case that, since they use him for brand deals, they deserve that exclusive trademark. At the end of the day, rather Disney is in the right or wrong, wrong for doing this isn't that important to our discussion on using Oswald. What is important is not getting sued by one of the biggest and most powerful companies in America. So how do we use Oswald in a way that Disney has a harder time trying to claim infringement on? Well, technically, as far as I'm aware, I have every legal right to use the Oswald design from the original short Trolley Troubles in any art or animation I want. I just wouldn't be able to call him Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. In many cases, I wouldn't even be able to include Rabbit as part of the distinction. But considering the fact that there are active trademarks for Oswald that use nearly the exact design from Trolley Troubles, it's better to be safe than sorry. So we're going to have to redesign Oswald. Now, Oswald is cool because his design is extremely simple and animator friendly. He's an anthropomorphic rabbit that's colored all black except for the face and pants. He's sassy, he's clever, and all around a silly boy. One other distinct feature to him is that he could take off his body parts at will, and even use them as items to interact with the world around him. He is the cartooniest cartoon I can think of. What we want to do is something transformative with the design that still shares the heart of the character, enough to distinguish him from the current Disney design that they own the copyright and trademark for, but not too different from his roots. Some directions I tried going in were specifically his silhouette. His round head and ears are the most identical part of his design outside of his entire body. How can we transform this? Hmm. Well, the original Oswald's head is a sort of oblong ellipse. Circle, eh? What if we gave him a chin bump? I love drawing those anyways because it helps define where the face is centered vertically. All right, that looks okay, but we gotta shake this up a little bit more. How about, instead of round ears, we give him two rectangles that taper near the head. They can curve under the weight of gravity like his original ears. Actually, I kinda like the direction of this. An angular Oswald. Yeah, yeah. So I tried some sketches of a more angular Oswald design. Some with the circular head, some with the reduced body size. I kinda like this chibi design, but it's a little too different for me. Might use it for something else. I started making the fingers sharp like rectangles too, but I don't think it clicked till I started drawing him in Toon Boom. Being able to overshoot lines and cut them away meant I could draw Oswald with plenty of sharp and round angles. To make his clothing a bit more distinct, I decided I'd add Oswald's strap from his Trolley Troubles outfit. With the ears, I have it that you draw four curved lines and then one single perpendicular curve at the top, so the ears look like they're an even cut, though that rule could be broken. Also while talking with one of our team's artists, Renku, I got the idea to push the angular style further by implementing design rules you'd find in shows like The Fairly Odd Parents, with simplified hands that are also angular. With some sketch tests and a sketch model sheet, I'd say this design looks ready for some fun, but I'm sure someone like him is still gonna need all the help you can get to ensure he's really public domain. Yeah. Hmm. Order, order! I said order! Now you stand trial of causing disorder! You think that you're free, but you're so clearly Disney, so how do you plead? I plead not guilty. Since 1927, I've had my fate sullied by a businessman who'd rather be bullies to get money, but in 1956, I shed the pain of copyright change. In 1956, I enter the world of public domain. <laughs> Public domain? You're clearly Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, right? Let me be clear.
say not guilty? Yes! Hey everybody, quickly showing up at the tail end of this video to let you know that this video was created with the help of Team Neutron. Who are they, you might ask? Well, they're a group of artists I hired about a month or two ago to start helping me with my content. This mainly to help reduce the large amount of stress on myself, but also to make sure I can get more high quality stuff to you guys as soon as possible. Now, as awesome as it is to have this team, my top priority is to make sure that they are paid for when they help me which means I need money to keep this stuff going. I have plans on keeping these afloat through my regular YouTube and music revenue, but this stuff is extremely temperamental, so before this video ends, I'd love to encourage folks to donate or subscribe to our Ko-fi to help fund more projects. We have big plans revolving around Reboot Me, Public Oswald, Versus Oswald, Steven's Nightmare, and a ton more. Plus, we'll be posting some behind the scenes stuff on how we make some of these videos. There will be other ways to support the channel, and I'm retooling a few of my previous other forms of crowdfunding, but for now, the best way to support us is through Ko-fi. So until part two is ready, we'll see you guys next time.